All right, so we're going over little max basic combinations on Super Smash Brothers, trying to uh, work on it on a real person and see if we can make it, see if it's practical or not. So, Gabe, can you throw up uh, the jab from Little Mac here? Sure. Nice. So let's see the basic jab with his left hand. It's a nice stiff jab. He's keeping his right hand up like this, and he's just gonna kind of crouch down. And he's throwing this jab like that. He does a little step. Can you throw the jab out? Yeah, out here. Do it again. Oops. You're good. Nice. So we watch his back foot here is actually lifting up a little bit, or is actually pushing forward for his jab. People usually do that just to uh, add a little more body weight behind their punches, right? So if you imagine if I just stand still and I just throw the jab like this, it's really only my arm doing most of the motions. All right, so when you do a basic jab like that, if you don't put your foot into it or your body weight into it, if you don't step into it right here, and I just throw my shoulder, even if I throw it as hard as I can, that's not very powerful. But once I add a little, a little push off of my back leg here, it's gonna allow me to put my entire body weight into that punch. Little Mac does that really well. So he actually crouches down a little bit and he goes right to there. Um, in the future, some people, they also like to step with their forward foot too. That really lets my body land with that punch when I throw that jab. So I'm going here and I'm going through. And there's Little Mac's jab there. And if I don't step with it, I really just replicate that back foot pushing. His foot's actually pointing per perpendicular to the opponent here. So he's really just driving off of that, that big toe there, trying to turn his hip into that, that jab here. Cool. Uh, let's move on to the cross here. Uh, so we'll do that one two that he does. Right. See if you can do it, yeah, from without the opponent in front of him. Nice. So he does actually uh, a jab into an overhand right. That's pretty cool. And that overhand right there, you see his back leg like that, is actually lifting up. So you can tell there's a lot of power into that overhand right. His front foot really doesn't move that much, but his knees are bent, everything's good there. And he's really pushing off of that back foot there. So this is kind of cool because it's kind of anatomically correct. It's actually generating the most power he can. And it's cool because he's actually keeping his eyes forward when he throws that overhand right. You're going to see a lot of people, they throw that overhand right like this. They actually look away from their opponent, which you, you think it's like it adds more power. But if you can imagine when I look away and my opponent dodges that punch, he's just going to punch you right back, right? So he does this great jab and he lifts up on his body weight here and throws his overhand right. So I'm going to go jab here and the overhand right is going to be like there. So I throw a jab up here, boom. And the overhand right lifts my feet off the ground. And we're gonna do that one more time. A jab, boom, overhand right here. Now he throws it with so much force that that back leg actually, actually lifts off from the ground here. So he jabs, boom, and that back foot lifts up. Now, um, again, his, his overhand right is actually pretty tight. What I mean by that is it's not a wild swing. You guys see like in in street fights and stuff like that, if you were swinging wildly like this, you call that a hook or an overhand. But realistically, that's a wide swing and your opponent can see that coming from, from a mile away, right? So you kind of mask your overhand right. You kind of mask your second punch with your first punch. So imagine this was at Dave's head here and he's kind of, I'm blocking his vision with that. Now he doesn't know the second hand's coming over the top to throw that big overhook. So I'm gonna go again, jab, overhand right. Now I'm gonna to try to emphasize lifting my foot up like that just because it's kind of what little Mac is doing. So again, I'll go jab and back. Jab, overhand right. I'm gonna to try to make my arm a little more angular right there. If you guys notice, I had a light, a pretty big, pretty big swing on that one. So I'm just gonna keep my elbow tucked in a little bit more and use really the drive of my body to just keep the person, to, to make my hook work, right? So I'm going jab, boom. That feels like a powerful punch there. Let me see if I can really lift up my back leg here. <clears throat> Great. And I'm trying my best to keep my eyes on Gabe here. That way I'm not turning away. And let me, let me, uh, I'm trying to do everything a little maximum. So let's try one more time and let's rewatch the footage. So I'm here. Nice. Cool. So let's see him do that again. Nice. So he even drops his body weight a little bit. 
His back foot's rotating really nice there. His front foot, again, is not doing much, but man, everything's going right into that overhand. Really awesome to see. So let's go to another. Uh, what else should we? Um, he has a three move combo, right? Yeah, really? yeah. yeah. So let's try that one out. He does jab, overhand, right? Ooh, and a body hook actually from the, with his left. So he's gonna go, he does the exact same two move combo and he adds a third move from there. Let's see it again. So he goes jab, overhand, right. Look at his body turning all the way for that left hook. That's a devastating blow right there in, in game and also in real life. See his back leg lifts up to that. His front foot, the pivoting of, of his front foot actually is really good, cool to see because he's actually pivoting his entire body weight perpendicular to the screen here. So he's, his toes is actually pointing towards the player here. And that really means that his body's rotating as best as it can. It's actually rotating optimally. See how that heel lifting up right there? You can see the bottom of his shoes there as he lifts up. This is a textbook body hook right here. Boom, look at that. Heels, heels. He's even leaning back into that punch there. That's a little extreme, but there have been some real life boxers who do it like that. Um, Prince, back in the day, he did weird angle punches that kind of came up from the bottom like that. So let's try that out on the mitts. So we have the exact same two move combo first. So we went jab, overhand right. Now what's gonna happen is this one's gonna move this way. Now I'm gonna try my best to lean up into this punch here and I'm raising up the heel of my front foot. So if I were wearing shoes, you'll see the, the bottom of my soles, right? So I'm going like this and he really leans back into this punch and really aims for, the, aims for the ceiling. So again, I'm gonna do that three move combo. I'm gonna jab, overhand right, lifting my foot here, and you really just, boom, all the way up towards the ceiling. So again, let's make it a little faster. Boom. Now I'm gonna try my best. Let's see if we can rotate on this side. That way I can really show my heels here. So that way you can see my foot's pointing at Gabe right here when I throw that jab. My foot's still pointing at him here. Now look at this front foot flare out. My heel actually raises up all the way so that the bottom, bottom of my feet is actually exposed here. So when I lean back to this overhand right, it's really going all the way through. Still a little faster. Again. And that feels great. So I'm trying my best to tone, turn my entire body into all these punches exactly how Little Mac does it. He does it kind of to the extreme, but it looks great on, on camera. It looks great on, on the game as well. So he ducks down for this jab. His overhand right, his eyes keeps forward for this one. Boom, my back heel's turned up. Now I'm loaded, everything's loaded for my left hand to throw this huge arching hook. Boom, all the way up. So let's do a little faster. Nice, again. Awesome, let's watch it again. Well, let's, we'll keep it on this angle, that way they can yeah. really see the shoes. So, throw this jab, overhand right, nice. Look at that, he keeps his eyes on his opponent, even for that, even for that hook. I kind of turned my head away a little bit, but man, that's great. That's some great flexibility there in the shoulder, he's leaning back like that. Boom, he's kind of like looking at his opponent there, taunting him with that, that body hook there. Let's try that one more time with the mitts. I really want to look forward as I throw that, that body hook. So I kind of looked away. So I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward on this one. I'm looking forward as well. And he does a real big lean on this one. Nice. Look forward, look forward, boom, look forward. Nice, let's try that again. And one more time. So what's cool about that, I guess it looks really good on camera, but you can imagine if you want to really put your entire body weight behind a punch like that, you kind of want to turn your head and look away just for a split second. Because let's say, imagine I want to spin in a circle, right? When I spin in a circle, my head turns and my body follows and I'm right back to the center. If my head stays forward and I try to spin in a circle, I kind of lose all that momentum. So it kind of makes sense if you're fighting though, you're always looking forward and you're always keeping your eyes on your opponent. But if I were to turn these punches into as 
strong of a punch as I can. I'm actually going to turn actually for my overhand right. I'm actually going to look away. Boom. Now I spot that, that body hook and I'm going to look away again. So my entire body gets to turn. So see that compared to the way little Mac does it. He looks forward, he looks forward. My body can really only turn this much my head's looking forward. Look how much more I can turn as I look away. That extra foot of, of power generation can help out a lot. Now if I just keep looking forward for this one, I can really only turn that much. But if I start looking away, you can really expose your back, which again for fighting is not practical. But if you're just trying to generate as much power as possible, it kind of makes sense to look away just for a split second. So let's try it a little max way and we'll try it the way that we look away. So I'm looking forward, he crouches down. Very powerful punch. Let me try to look away for these now. So pretty cool. Uh, I can understand the rationale, but eventually you want to get to the point where you're really looking away and really turning your entire body into that punch. Cool. Let's see what else he has. Grabs? Yeah, we go to the grabs. Oh, he also has that that uh, neutral special, right? Oh, yeah. Before we threw the throw the grab. Nice. Look at that charge up there. Let it go. Boom. Great. I do some uh, karate, and I actually have some followers on Instagram that follow my channel. But all you karate guys, you guys can see that he's essentially doing a reverse punch. That's super stylized. That front foot there, look at that. It's turning. He's literally exposing his heel all the way to his opponent here. His, his back leg here is bent. So he's essentially doing like a lunge away from his opponent. That's how much power generation he's able to, to create. And now he's like charging up to here. Let me see his hands from here. Oh. His shoulder blades are pulled back. That's a really cool stance there. Look at that heel exposed there. His, his back foot there is tilted just a little bit. And then when he throws that punch, man, that's a beautiful punch. The guy goes out of the ring. It's pretty amazing. So I'm here. He throws it back. That back foot, look at that little angle and that tilt. That's so much attention to detail from the game developers here. They didn't have to do that, but there's, there's a reasoning for that actually mechanically. So you can imagine if I, if I just do this, and I turn my heel up when my foot is flat onto the mat, and I'm, my hands up here, my shoulder blades are back, and I really try to charge up for that punch. All of my weight is actually on this back leg before I throw my punch and I do this. But if you angle your body in a little bit, notice how the foot's kind of tilted up when I do this. When you angle your body in a little bit, you're actually kind of turning your body into a spring. So your, your body kind of turns into like a coil. And when it coils back like that, that means there's a lot of potential energy for me to coil forward and deliver a really strong punch. Let's uh, use the red shield on this one. So again, as Gabe is, is getting ready, I'm turning my foot, my heel is exposed to my opponent here. My back foot is actually angled a little bit in. My, the edge of my foot is actually turned up a little bit. Not flat like this. Notice how there's a difference between my structure, which is kind of like a triangle right now, and now it's turning into like an hourglass, if you can imagine that, right? So. The hourglass structure, and that's also in karate too, the hourglass structure is really uh, important because you're actually creating like a coil, like a spring, into the ground with your entire body like that. Notice how I can bend my knees inward and really launch myself towards the red bag. If I don't do that, I'm actually just tr trying my best to use all of my muscle on this leg to try to push off of that leg and punch in. Whereas from here, I'm using my entire body to, to punch in, right? So. Let's watch his stance. So I have my heels pointed this way, my heels exposed to my to the back here, my arms like this, my shoulder blades are back, his hand was around here pretty low, and my back foot here is pretty pretty angled in. I have this hourglass look, he's crouched down like this, and he's gonna essentially explode into that red back here. <clears throat> nice. And take off my glasses just sort of just so it doesn't fly off. So again, I'm here, shoulder blades back. <clears throat> nice. You could really make some damage on that one. It's a little, I mean, it's pretty fantastical to be charging up for this one. 
but you can imagine if someone throws a punch at you here, you really just block that punch and you go all the way through, it's gonna work pretty, pretty well. So if you put that bag down, I'm not gonna punch you hard here. But let's say he throws a, a punch with his right hand and I'm going, mm. notice how the positioning and everything's the same. I can literally just open this up, home, right to the gut here, blossom him out of my house, blossom him out of, the, out of the stage, right? So let's try that with the red bag again. So imagine that punch coming in and you're really just charging up here, blocking that hand down, swimming this hand all the way through. My heel is exposed here, turning up, and my, my body creates this hourglass here, and I really just want to blast boom, all the way through. Now, we'll rewatch the footage, see if he really lifts up on his heel on this one, which I would advise you do, because imagine you're like throwing a baseball or something right here. If I don't lift up on my heel when I throw the ball, my body kind of stops. The energy in my body kind of stops right at my foot, right? So this is as far as I can throw. And now imagine when I lift up my heel, my body can kind of follow through. That's going to allow me to really throw more with more power. So if I'm charging up like this and I throw my punch, right, I go, boom. notice how my back heel turns forward. That's really going to allow me to drive all the way through and add that little extra oomph to the end of my punch, boom, as I punch all the way through. So I'm going to do it a couple more times fast and we're going to rewatch the footage. Charge back. I go through. Again, charge back, hourglass, everything's good, shoulder blades back, this one's charged up, and I go all the way through. Cool, let's watch it. Nice, look at that. Full extension this leg. Nice, look at that, his heel actually turned up. Is exactly what I was talking about. He is following the way through with his punch here. Boom, he brings his other elbow back all the way. That's such a cool animation. Look at him, he's kind of like drawing in the air there, charging up with his punch. Let's see that again. So he pulls all the way back, his legs like literally straight here. I want you guys to see that, that pull of the pullback first. So right off the bat, let's see. Nice, so imagine he's like pulling all this energy from the air as he charges up here. His legs literally way down here. Let's try it again on the red bag. I really want to get this right. Here, he's actually pulling the air. Imagine just pulling back and look how low I am now compared to how I was before. I'm literally, literally doing like a, a lunge all the way to the mat here. Heels exposed, hourglass feature here. I'm, I'm here. I feel super strong, super powerful. Let me try that again. Pull, and he goes all the way through. And he actually pulls his elbow back. You can see it behind his back. So let me try to pull that elbow back really tight. I'm going. Pull, and all the way through. Man, that feels great. So one thing you guys want to keep in mind, if you want to apply this, of course, in real life somehow, um, I don't want to pull my elbow back so far here, because look, this whole side of my body is exposed now. So he okay, puts the red back down, and let's say I, he throws that punch, I block it, I do this, and let's say I miss, oh crap, my hand's here, he'll just throw a strike right back to my head, boom! Right, so something to keep in mind, this looks great stylistically with this elbow flare back like that, but that exposes my head. So one thing you want to keep in mind is when I throw this punch, he punches in, boom, and I throw my power punch here, this hand comes up. So even if I miss, he's not going to tag, tag me back, right? So that's something to keep in mind when we try to apply this more practically. Of course, uh, neutral B can't really be practical for this, but you know what I mean. All right, let's move on. For the grabs. So I think the first grab, oh yeah, the first grab is kind of cool, where he goes straight down. Boom, he does a little Donkey Kong smash here. It's pretty awesome. So he's gonna grab in. That's so funny. He's grabbing literally like, a, who is that, E-Honda in Street Fighter? Okay. <laughs> he does an E-Honda grab. He's lunging forward. If you guys ever done grappling or wrestling like that, this is like the worst way to grab anybody because you're literally exposing your head to them. With your hands back here, you're gonna get struck in the face, right? You're exposing your head and you're just hoping that you grab onto something. And in this case, he does get to grab onto something since he's a little Mac. He does a little pull in when he, when he uh, lifts his hands up and his hand's gonna go over his head and he's gonna smash down like that. It's pretty cool. 
Nice. That's something most people aren't going to catch, right? So he actually reaches back, he grabs in. Before he lifts up, he's actually pulling in. See that? Boom. He pulls in and goes straight down. So let's try that out. All right, Gabe, do you have a helmet? <laughs> just kidding. Uh, <laughs> so we're here. So all I'm going to do now is I'm essentially just, I'm going to grab her actually around the wrist. This feels a little more practical to me. It's going to be hard for me to try to grab him around the shoulder or anything like that. So let's say he has his, his guard up like this, right? So my hands are actually going to reach around. Boom. And from here, I'm actually going to pull in. And the act of pulling in brings down his guard. So it's going to be like that. Boom. And that's going to allow me to throw that overhand smash attack, right? So I'm here. Boom. Back. You can imagine how devastating that can be if, if, it, if it lands. So let's try that again. Just a slow motion, so I'm actually cupping with my hands here, and I'm pulling back, and look, when I pull back, I'm not just pulling with my hands. The way he does it, he's actually leaning back to pull. The reason why you want to do that is actually you're putting your entire body weight behind your pull. So imagine, let's say Gabe resists my pull, and I just use my arms. So I'm here, and I just pull with my arms. It's gonna be the stronger guy that's gonna defend that, right? So instead, I need to pull with my entire body weight here. I go back, and that's, that's where he's gonna get pulled off balance, that's where he's gonna uh, take down his guard. So right after that moment, that's your opportunity to throw that smash. So I'm here, boom, and I go all the way through. You know, actually, I might use that in a sparring situation in the future, because that, that felt great. The one thing I also like to do is headbutts too, so I would boom, right to the face there. And that's the end of that fight. So let's, let's watch it again. All right, he's running over, does that grab, he does his pullback. See how he leans back so hard for that smash? That's awesome. Let's go on to the next one. Ooh, that's such a good one. And he's doing it with gloves on. If you guys never uh, try to grab somebody with gloves on, that's actually why I took mine off. It's pretty hard to do, especially imagining trying to grab onto your reuse, reuse uniform right there. Like, that's, that's, that's pretty impossible actually. So we're gonna give this some creative license and just let them, let, let's, let us believe that it's possible here. So let's try it again. So he's going for the grab, boom. It's like he grabs his lapel, throws him with his left arm all the way to the other side. It's literally a 180 turn. And he throws his, it's actually a right body hook now, or a right uppercut here. So boom, let's try that. Right uppercut, nice. So this is actually pretty cool because there's a, there's a few real concepts in here that we can actually look at. So um, the biggest thing for me is reactions off the break. So that's what I call kind of like when two guys are, are struggling, let's say they're grappling here, and then the, the exchange breaks off. The first one to react, the one that reacts off that break, usually takes over the fight. So for example, you know, Barry Gabe? Yeah. So let's say we're grabbing hands like this, and then we break off for some reason. If you throw a punch right there before I do, boom. I'm so focused on that grab, right, that he's gonna be able to take over the fight. So you imagine the tides of the fight kind of changes, right? So you can throw like a one-two combination after that, boom. So let's go, we grab, we break, and you throw your one-two, you know how he's driving me back, right? So this is exactly what Little Mac's doing in this, in this throw. He's actually grabbing, so I'm gonna grab Gabe here. One thing to think about, where you grab, since uh, not everyone wears a uniform like that, like Ryu in the street, I, I can grab his shirt, or I can cut my hand behind his neck. So if his hands are up here, I can actually cut behind his neck here, and my hand here kind of assists me to rotate him all the way to this side. Boom! Now look, his my right leg's forward, and I just throw my body hook, boom, right off the bat from there, right? That's exactly what little Mac's doing like that. And with the whole concept of reactions off the break, He's thinking that I'm just trying to throw him. What I'm thinking is, I'm gonna throw him and I'm gonna throw that shot right after we let go. So the faster I can make that, that transition, the more real it's gonna feel, the more practical, practical it can be. So I go, boom, back. Before he even thinks about, about defending, he's stumbling, trying to get his balance back, and I already threw that body shot again. Let's go on this side, let's, let's throw him the other way. So again, I'm here, I grab behind his neck here. I'm actually gonna throw him this way before he even looks at me. Ah, I throw that body hook right back into him. And that's the same hook that we did earlier with the, with the lead leg here. 
So let's watch it again and let's see what else we can dissect from it. So he throws a grab, turns them all the way. Boom! Look at that, lean back for that hook. That's such a good hook there. And you see his, his heels are exposed, his body, his shoulder blades are pulled back. Man, he is... What? Do that again? He does a little trip, actually. I didn't even catch that the first time. So over here, he grabs. Watch his back foot. Yeah! Ah. He actually trips him. So he's even doing some more, some more uh, misdirection there. So let's yeah, try that tripping. out. Whoever thought a boxer is going to use their feet to trip, right? So I'm here, I'm grabbing behind his neck, but my lead foot, actually my rear foot here, is going to essentially put a barrier in front of his legs. So he's going to be like stumbling over them. Now that's like a two-fold attack, right? So I'm going here, he stumbles over this foot, boom, man, I throw my body hook right off of that. Let's try it on this side. Pretty awesome. So I'm grabbing in, I'm grabbing like a little Mac here. I'm going to make him stumble this way, boom, my lead foot, the tripping foot's already in front. That's why I can just boom, throw my hook right all the way through. Yeah, that feels awesome. So let's try it again. I grab, boom, make the stumble, leave the foot, foot's already there, boom, throw my uppercut. All right, let's, start, let's do a couple more throws. Man, I'm excited, this is good. <laughs> let's see, do forward. Oh, nice, nice. Oh, before we forget, we had that dirty boxing one too. The little jab from the, from the grab, where he does those mini oh, uppercuts. Yeah. So this actually, do the forward throw, oh. this is essentially the same thing. Oops. Very good. Forward throw, okay. Oh, so his forward throw is an overhand hook, overhand, and his, his uh, dirty boxing is actually mini uppercuts. So let's combine those two together, so. Ooh, that's nice. Perfect, so let's do uh, two dirty boxing techniques right into that overhand right. So everything is the same, I'm grabbing here. If I could grab the material of his, his shirt, that's great, or behind the neck here. He does two little dirty boxing uh, uppercuts. So these here, you're essentially, when you do stuff like this, especially uh, with gloves on, stuff like that, you're trying to cause a reaction. You're not gonna do much to him here. Like, look, I'm doing this so that he can put his hands down to block, right? So now look, his hands are occupied blocking this uppercut here so that I can start throwing my overhand, boom! And now there's a big open space for me to throw that overhand, right? Uh, so again, I'm going for the grab, boom! One, two, he blocks it, boom! Three, overhand right over the top. That happens a lot in street fights, especially grabbing onto the shirt here and moving the guy around, right? So I could pull him into, with this grip here, I could pull him into that shot, so he's worried about getting hit in the stomach here, boom! Back and right over the top. And that's exactly what Little Max is doing. It's cool that they incorporated like a real tactic in, in boxing. A lot of times they don't let you clinch up like this, but in, in MMA and stuff like that, you can start clinching behind the neck in Muay Thai as well and start moving the guy around here. So I can literally steer him around, throw my dirty boxing punches here, boom, these short uppercuts. So now look, it opens up his head, boom, and I throw one right over the top. 